ready to stand. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bride adorned with her jewels. Isaiah 61, verse 10. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin to celebrate uh, this feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, it's a solemnity, it's a holy obligation, but I know so many people are still unable um, to get to Mass in person, and so here we are uh, celebrating uh, not only celebrating this, this incredible feast, this solemnity, what God has done in Mary's life and therefore what he's done through her in our lives, but, but also just thanking the Lord and asking him to, you know, the Immaculate Conception is, I believe, the patroness of uh, the United States of America. And so we ask uh, for her intercession, not only upon our, in our own lives, but also upon this country in which we're praying right now and for all people who belong to our Lord Jesus throughout the world knowing our faults, knowing our sins, knowing the ways in which we just need God on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, we call upon him now as we acknowledge our sins and ask for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You lived and intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, Grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's Word. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, To sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous deeds. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined for us adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the Beloved. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one, who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. The angel Gabriel was sent by, from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great. And will, be, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most, of the most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to have a seat. So one of the things, as we celebrate this feast, the feast solemnity of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception is, um, what is the Immaculate Conception and what's the purpose of the Immaculate Conception? And I think those are really important because sometimes we can, we can get it in our heads that just like, um, these are just random, random kind of celebrations, random doctrines we have about, about Our Lady. What is the doctrine? And the doctrine is this, um, that Mary, from the first moment of her conception, was preserved from all stain of original sin by the merits of her son's future life, death, and resurrection. So, we heard in the first reading from Genesis chapter 3. Here is Adam and Eve. They're in the garden. They are sinless. They're, they're, even scripture says, uh, they're children of God. They walk with God. They have an intimate relationship with God. But at one point, what happens is they make a choice and it breaks the world. They make a choice and it breaks their relationship with God, breaks their relationship with each other, and it breaks their relationship even in, it breaks their own hearts. And so this is, the, this is the, the world into which you and I are, are born. This world in which we have no access to the Father. He keeps reaching out to us, but we have no way to, to restore that relationship. Even our relationships with each other are broken. And even in our own hearts, our hearts are broken. We don't even do what we want to do. And we keep doing what we don't want to do. And we find ourselves in this, in this place. And so what does God do? Well, God, in God's plan, in the fullness of time, that... He restores our relationship with him through Jesus Christ, right? That, that God, Jesus reconciles this, this, this unbreakable gap between humanity and God. God, God, man, Jesus Christ reconciles that broken relationship. He bridges the unbridgeable gap between humanity and God. Not only does he let us have a relationship with him again, he actually restores and makes it possible to, for us to have a relationship with each other in a full, full sense. A relationship, relationships that have uh, kindness and are dominated by, by joy and love and reconciliation and forgiveness. He also makes it possible for us to have whole hearts again. This is what Jesus Christ has done for every one of us. He's made it possible for us to be restored. The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception is that from the first moment of Mary's conception, she was preserved from that division between her and God. 
She's preserved, preserved from the division that, that every one of us experiences between us, each other. And she was also preserved from that, that broken heart that all of us have, right? We have a dimming of our intellect. We have a weakening of our will. We're attracted to sin. That Mary was preserved from all three of those things, as well as preserved from the bro- broken relationship, as well as preserved from the broken relationship with, with the Lord. Now, um, people ask, well, what? where do you get this idea? Where do you get this truth? Well, one of the places we get it is from Luke's gospel today. In Luke's gospel, we have a couple things. One is, at one point, the angel Gabriel comes to Mary. He doesn't say, hail Mary. We say that. He says, hail full of grace, which is the Greek word karikatomene, which it basically uh, means like it's, it's full to abundance. So here's me, super lazy when it comes to washing dishes. So have you maybe used this example before. You ever have like soap in a, in a glass and rather than like rinse it out and dump it out, rinse it out and dump it out, you just like hold it under the faucet and let it like keep rolling. You ever did this? Like, so, so, so that's what it is. That's what karikatomene is. It's that it's so full, there's no room for anything else. So there's dirt in a glass and you just keep holding it under the, the faucet. At some point, It'll have no more dirt and just be full of water. Mary, in this word that Gabriel uses to, her, to, to address her, calls her karitomene, which essentially means uh, overflowing with grace. There's no room for anything else like sin. That's one little clue. But the other clue is <laughs> the whole story. We read the story of Genesis chapter 3, right? And what do you have? You have a man without sin. You have a woman, with, a woman without sin. You have the old Adam and the old Eve. And this angel of light, right, Lucifer, this is the light bearer, this angel of light speaks to the woman without sin, words that cause her to disbelieve and disobey. She hands on that disbelief and disobedience to the man without sin, and they hand on this disbelief and disobedience to the rest of us. That's how it goes, right? Angel of light to the uh, sinless woman, to the sinless man, disobedience and disbelief to humanity. Well, in Luke chapter 1, we hear this reversal of the story where we know that Paul calls Jesus, the new Adam. So if there's an old Adam and a new Adam, there's an old Eve, is there possibly a new Eve? And the church has said, yes, that there is a new Eve. Just like the old Adam was sinless, the new Adam is sinless. Just like the old Eve was sinless, the new Eve was sinless. Why? Because in Luke chapter 1, we have the story of an angel of light. Gabriel speaks words to this woman without sin that cause her to believe and obey. And she hands on that belief and obedience to the man conceived in her womb, who then lives a whole life of obedience and belief and hands on the fruits of that. So we have Adam and Eve who are the fall team. We have Mary and Jesus who are the redeemed team. And it makes so much sense, right? I think this seems to make so much sense that uh, here is God who allowed us to choose to break the world, that he brings in a human being and allows them to choose to redeem the world. People ask the question, they said, was, is that necessary? that Eve had to be without sin? And the answer is no. It's not necessary that Eve had to be without, without sin. It is fitting that Eve was without sin, that Mary was, was it necessary for Mary to be without sin? No, it's fitting that Mary would be without sin. Why? Because God had given her a particular task. And this is the big question that comes up to all of our hearts. The big question is, well, okay, that's great for Mary. If Jesus can preserve her from all state of original sin by the merits of his future death and resurrection, then why doesn't he just preserve us from stain of original sin at our conceptions too? Why doesn't he just apply that to us in the moment of our conception? And the answer, I guess I have to say, is I don't know. But here's my guess. What we do know is that God gives every person exactly what they need for whatever task he's called them to. God gives every person exactly what they need to accomplish the vocation, to accomplish the task, to accomplish the mission that he has called them to. And so here's Eve's mission. Here's Eve's task. Sorry, here's Mary's mission. Mary's task was to say yes in freedom, just like Eve said no in freedom. And so God gave her everything she needed to fulfill that task. Just in the same way that God will give you everything you need to fulfill your task. Because the truth of the matter is, on this feast, the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, we're reminded not only of what God has done in Mary's life, but also we're reminded of the fact that he wants to do something in your life too. There's this man, his name is St. John uh, Henry Newman. St. John Henry Newman was a convert to the Catholic faith in his 40s, I think he was 45, he was an Anglican priest for a bunch of years and became Catholic. And 
He's incredibly influential. He lived an incredibly painful life. He, just, he suffered in, depth, in the depths of his heart. He suffered rejection from, from friends. He suffered rejection. You know, when he was Anglican, he was, he was like a leading star in the, in the church. When he became Catholic, all his Anglican, Anglican friends abandoned him. And uh, all the Catholics were suspicious of this guy who just, you know, became Catholic. And he found himself incredibly lonely and incredibly hurting. But he knew he wasn't abandoned. And he knew he was going to be given everything that he needed to accomplish the task that God had set before him. At one point, he wrote this prayer. And it used to be a prayer that we'd pray all the time here because this is the Newman Center, right? So we'd have this prayer and we'd say it virtually every day. But his prayer is this. He says, God has created me to do him some definitive service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told it in the next. I'm a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. He has not created me for nothing. I shall do good. I shall do his work. I shall be an angel of peace, a preacher of truth in my own place, while not intending it if I do but keep his commandments. Therefore, I will trust him. Whatever I am, I can never be thrown away. Therefore, I will trust him. Whatever I am, I can never be thrown away. If I'm in sickness, may my sickness serve him. In perplexity, my perplexity may serve him. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow may serve him. He does nothing in vain. He knows what he is about. He may take away my friends. He may throw me among strangers. He may make me feel desolate, make my spirits sink, Hide my future from me. Still, he knows what he is about. God has created you for some definitive service. He has a a work for you that cannot be done by any other. He created Mary for some definitive service. This yes, and not just the yes in this moment, but the yes of her whole life, handed on belief and obedience to the Son of God, who what he did handed on obedience and belief and reconciliation to us. God has called you to some definitive service, just like he called Mary to some definitive service. And our belief, our our, our proclamation, our absolute conviction is that he will give you everything you need, no matter what it is, to accomplish this definitive task no matter what it is. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God gives us what we need, we first ask him for all that we need. That through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the church will continue to be strengthened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Government leaders will work to bring justice to those deprived of liberty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, women who carry the gift of life in their womb will be protected from harm and be given the health care they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will turn readily to the Mother of God in times of need and join our songs of gladness to her in times of joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may find strength and hope in the love of God, and that those who have died may rejoice eternally in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of the prayers and intercessions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to offer our prayer by praying our Diocese of Duluth prayer for vocations. If you want to pray for your vocations in your diocese, please join us as we pray. Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families, to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life, Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her, on account of your prevenient grace, to be untouched from any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all of our faults. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of your church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
in a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with, with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Glorious things are spoken of you, O Mary, for from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our God. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserved Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina. Mater misericordiae, vita dulce do, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filiae, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, ilos tuos. Misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, post hoc exilium, ostende. O 